All right, so I'm going to show you how to interact with OpenAI's Vision API in probably under 10 minutes is my goal. So basically, in basis, what I've created is this template. It's an input-output type of situation where it's got all the little elements that you need to start interacting with the API. So we have an image uploader, an area to define a prompt. So you'll tell the model, like, tell me what you see or extract the text from this image. And then we have a little area over here where it is going to output what the model responds with. So... Let's upload an image. Here I have this image, which is has some text on it, a little action list for myself. And here in the prompt, I'm saying extract the text from the image, only output the extracted text. So we're going to run this. This is going to call the OpenAI Vision API. And then here we go. We can see that it has output what it saw. So again, this is super simple. So let's get into how to actually do this. You're gonna need a couple of things. So first things first, if you don't have a bubble account, go and create a bubble account. You're gonna need to create a new app. Once you've created an app, go over to the Basis Lab extension. You're gonna add this and activate it while you're in the bubble editor. You'll create your account and then you're going to copy and paste the, the template. So over here in bubble, I'm in an existing app. I'm gonna activate the Basis extension. So over here in blocks, there's this input output shell. So we're going to copy that and we're going to right click and paste it. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a new page. And again, this has all the little elements you need to start interacting with the API. So next thing we need to do is we need to essentially get our OpenAI API keys because we're going to set up an API call. So if you don't have an OpenAI account, go ahead and do that. And then over here in API keys, you're going to want to create a new secret key. When it shows it to you, you're gonna to wanna to copy that key, okay? Because I think you can only see it once. And then also another thing you'll wanna do is over on the documentation on OpenAI, um, go to platform.openai.com and here you'll see the vision section. We're gonna we're gonna grab this code block here in just a second, but you can open this page if you want or you can go there when we get to that part. So, okay, everything's designed. We basically just need to set up the workflows in the API call. So let's set up the API call. Over here in the plugins, and click add plugin. We're going to add the API connector if you don't already have it. And I'm going to click add another API here. You can select import another call from curl. And what we can do here is if we go back over to the documentation, this quick start code block right here, or API call, we're going to copy that. Make sure it's selected on curl. I'm going to go back to your bubble app, um, paste that in and click import. And what that's going to do is essentially going to pre-configure that API call. I would name it something like OpenAI, we'll say vision. We wanna set use as as action. So that's gonna allow your API call to show up in your workflow over here when we click the button. So this is a post request. This is the endpoint, whoops. This is the endpoint that we are calling. And then you can select private on these. So you're gonna keep this content type application JSON for authorization. That secret key that you just grabbed from your API keys over here, you're gonna to wanna to paste that in right here. So we'll go right there and then paste in your API key. I'm gonna grab mine really quickly. Cool, so I've added mine in. And then now we're gonna go down here and look at the body of the API call. So when we pasted that in, basically everything is configured for us, but we're gonna input some dynamic values. So if we go over back into the design tab, a user is gonna be able to upload an image you're gonna be able to write a prompt to essentially tell the model what they want it to do with the image. And we wanna be able to set those values into the API call so that OpenAI knows how to respond and also see the image that the user has uploaded. So back in our plugin tab for the API call, we're going to essentially set two um, brackets right here like that. I'm gonna say this is user prompt. And in this case, I'm not keeping the quotes because we're going to set, essentially our value is JSON safe, which I'll get into here in a second, but basically just set it up like this, where you have two brackets, user prompt. If I click down here, then you'll see that value pop up over here. And the next thing we're going to do is the same thing for the image URL. First things first, I actually wanna copy this image because in order to initiate the API call, we need a value. And so we're just gonna copy this because OpenAI has provided us one. But I'm going to, again, set two brackets. I'm gonna say user image. And in this case, I am keeping the quotes around it. And again, I'll explain here in just a second. So if we click back down here, you'll see user image and user prompt. You're gonna uncheck private. I'm gonna paste in to the user image 
section, I'm going to paste in that, that essentially URL to an image that they provided. And then for the user prompt, I'm going to add some quotes here. So quote, quote, and I'm going to say, what is this image? And so now we're going to activate or initialize the API call to make sure everything's working. So we'll click initialize. Hopefully this works. I think it's working because it takes a little bit. Perfect. So we got return values. If you go over here to show raw data, you can essentially see what the model responded with. So this is an image shows a wooden boardwalk. Again, we didn't look at the image. We just kind of pasted the URL, but I'm going to trust it, at least in this case, that this is what it saw. So we'll click save. And now our API call is initialized. So if we go back over to our design tab, now all we really need to do is connect this all up. So everything happens on this button click. So we're going to click add workflow and we're going to go down to plugins. And then let's see, which one did I use? I think it's new API. Sorry, I set this up before. So anyways, here we can see those dynamic values that we set up. So the first thing we want to do is, okay, what is our user prompt going to be? So again, looking at our design tab here, we have this multi-line input and that's the name of it. Multi-line input a, we'll go back to our workflow. We're going to set that as our dynamic value. So we'll search multi-line input a value. And then we want to say formatted as JSON save. So if you just start, start typing formatted as you'll see a formatted as JSON save, what that's going to do. It's just because it's sending it as JSON to an API, it needs to format it in a certain way so that certain characters don't trigger an error. So that's what that's doing. And then when it comes to our user image, this is the image upload or picture uploader. So back in our workflow, we'll set that to a dynamic value. We'll search picture uploader a and its value. So, okay, now everything is configured, but when we click this button, it's going to call the API, but we need a way to know that it's responded and we need to display that, right? So it'll work likely once I run this, but we won't really know because we can't see anything. So we're going to set a state to the page. And what a state is, is basically just storing like a, temp a temporary value. Um, so this page is called input output one. We're going to create a new custom state. We're just going to call this model response. I'll we'll set this to text. That's the type. So basically when we click the button, it calls the API, it's going to set a state and we're going to say the result of step one, I believe it's choices, um, first item message content. And basically what I'm doing there is the, the response is structured in JSON. And so it's kind of like this sort of tree structure. And if we go back to our API call, uh, if I click manually enter API response, this is just going to show what the response looked like. And here you can see that it says choices and then it's message. And then you can see role and content are sort of nestled under message. And so that's how you have to kind of like find the specific value that you're looking for when it comes to bubble. So I'm gonna exit out of that back in my workflow. Okay, that's gonna set that state. So now it's saved that value to the page, but then we need to display it actually on the page. And so if we go over here, I have this little text text placeholder that I've set up for you. We're going to set a dynamic value. And so the name of this page again is input output one, which I see right here. Here's that custom state that we just created. And I think that should be it. So let's try this. Hopefully it works. So we'll click preview. All right. So let's see. Here's my image of some text. Again, we'll say extract the text text from the image. And again, you can do whatever here, but I'm using an image with text. Oh my God, of course. So we got an error. Basically it says there's an invalid quotation mark. Okay. Oh, I know why. So over here in our workflow, when I set up the API call, the picture uploader, what we need to do is we need to add, so that just deleted it out, but you're going to add HTTP S colon, and then you're going to insert a dynamic value, which is the picture uploader A's value, which there we go. The reason for this is when a file is uploaded to bubble, when you try and access the URL, it doesn't provide the HTTPS portion. And so I think that's why it threw the error. So let's try that again. All right, let's upload, um, sweaty robot. Let's just do this cute little robot. 
and we'll just say describe what you see. We'll run this. All right, so I think it's working this time because it's taking a moment. Oh my goodness. Okay, perfect. So it described in great detail what this image is. So we know everything's working. And just like that, you've got, you know, a pretty valuable app, to be honest. You can set this up for clients and do amazing things, whether it's text extraction or, you know, describing what you see. So the other thing I just wanted to show really quickly is a good user experience practice is showing things like this when the model is loading or thinking just so people understand what's going on. And so what we're going to do here is we're just going to do some a few custom events basically to turn this on and off. So what I'm going to do right here is uncheck this is visible on page load. First thing we need to do is we want to show it when the button is clicked because that's when we know the model is thinking. So we're going to say element actions toggle and we'll say HTML, I think that's it. loading dots. So you're going to toggle that, which is going to turn it on because we just turned it off, right? From there, we're also going to trigger a custom event. The custom event doesn't exist yet, so we need to create it. So over here, we'll click new workflow, or add an event, custom, create custom event. I'm just going to call this hide dots, okay? And so what happens is when this is triggered, we are going to hide that HTML loading dots. Perfect. So then if we go back here, we'll trigger, okay, I guess it, it linked it, so we'll trigger that event. Okay, so let's try this again. We'll do our robot. Perfect. We'll say show what, or tell us what you see in one sentence. Click run, and again, so that showed the dots. And then, perfect, it turned it off when the response came back. Amazing. So just in a few minutes, you've set up a very valuable API workflow, all with Bubble. So check it out. Let me know your thoughts if you have questions. And hopefully, you create some amazing things.